Hello YouTube and welcome back to What The Math. Today we're going to be using Kerbal's face program and we're going to be trying to figure out how to always consistently land on a specific, at a specific location, basically back on Kerb, uh, at uh, Kerbal Space Center because that's where we take off and that's where we actually want to land and if you're playing in career mode, the closer you land to Kerbal Space Center, the more money you recover. So I'm going to get back into my spaceship and show you how to do this mathematically. Now I'm going to be assuming that you don't use MacJab just like me, uh, because MacJab does this for you uh, um, automatically. But if you want to do this manually, this is what you do. So, uh, well, before we start, let's let me just um, show you how I actually calculated all this, how I found all this. Uh, I actually used this beautiful graph that I'm about to show you that someone actually made. And it's the graph right here, Kerbal Equatorial Landing Phase Angle Chart. Now, what this shows you is, well, someone actually did this uh, with a really awesome formula, and they've calculated a phase angle needed to land anywhere between 70 kilometers, which is the lowest orbit, up to about 1,000 kilometers, which is the highest orbit. Now, it's, this is actually in 10 to the power of 5 meters. So this right here, where it says 10, this is actually uh, 1,000 kilometers, and this one is actually just 100 kilometers. Now, so, where it says is, at about 70 kilometers, your phase angle should be 90 degrees. What is the phase angle, you may ask? Well, let me show you. So here's the planet, and I'm going to be using a protractor to show you what this is. So this is Kerbal Space Center right here. This is actually where my one of my aircrafts is parked. And I'm going to use this protractor that I found online, and I've used before. And it's basically a, uh, a Java-based protractor that you can download. It's called On-Screen Protractor. You can just Google it and see if you find it. Uh, and here we go. So. I'm placing my Kerbal Space Center right here. The phase angle is the angle uh, ahead of Kerbal Space Center. So right here, this is 90 degrees. So this is 90 degrees. And if I aim, uh, so basically if I'm orbiting 70 kilometers above Kerbin, I should be aiming right here at 90 degrees. And this will allow me to land uh, back at Kerbal Space Center uh, almost uh, almost directly above it, basically. And when I say aim for 90 degrees, um, 90 degree phase angle. What I mean is this. What I mean is you is that you have to make a periapsis of zero meters right at 90 degree phase angle. So kind of like here, except that this is actually not 90 degrees because I'm not actually 70 kilometers above Kerbin. But this is periapsis of almost zero. Uh, it's about to, there. We go. This is periapsis of zero, and this should be 90 degrees. Uh, 90 degrees uh, ahead of Kerbal Space Center. So this is how you find your uh, landing phase angle. Now, let's go back to this graph and look at it. So up to about f 500 kilometers, the phase angle actually decreases to about 50 degrees. After this, oh, so this is already available, so you wouldn't actually have to calculate it. You can actually use this graph, and I, I've posted the link for this in the description below. And I would like to thank, uh, let me see who made this. Uh, I don't have his name here. Uh, this person. Oh, okay. Alter Baron. Thank you, Alter Baron, for providing this awesome graph. Now, up, after about 500 kilometers, you see that the graph increases exponentially, but it stops at a thousand. And the thing is, I often find myself above thousand kilometers, and I would like to know how to land from there. So this is where my dilemma ar arose, and this is why I decided to actually try to calculate this try to find a way to find a basically an equation that will allow me to calculate uh, landing phase angles above a thousand kilometers. And what I used for this is, well, except for my calculator, I used this. I used this beautiful table that's available on, on uh, Kerbal Wikipedia, and I'm posting the link for this as well. And this is actually how that other person found the graph as well. So these are orbital altitudes and landing phase angles. And this is actually just data from, I guess, MacJab or something. I'm, I don't actually even know how they got this. And this is for different planets. So you, you can also use this to calculate this for other planets using technique that I show you. I'll show you in a second. So there's Eve, Duna, and Lathe, Lathe right here as well. So what you do is uh, you need a calculator, specifically you need a, gra a graphing calculator. I'm going to be using my simulator for this, TI-84 simulator. And I'll show you what to do. So these will be our X values and these will be our Y values. I'm going to be looking at um, X and Y values, uh, just the ones that are more round, like for example, this one here, 
Now I'll take this one here and I'll take a few other ones. And what I'll do is, here's what you do. Turn it on and you go to stat, edit, and enter all the X values under L1. And not all, I'm sorry. Uh, enter about 10 of them under L1 and then uh, same about 10 values for L2. And I've entered a few right here already. I have, I think, I think I have less than 10. Uh, and the more you enter, the more accurate this will be. Then go to stats. Uh, now go to calc. Scroll down to, I think it's 9. Oops, it's not 9. It's 10. Uh, um, expreg. So this is exponential function calculator. Click on it. And now you want to save it. So keep all of this the same, but now you want to save this as uh, one of the variables. So go to vars, yvars, function. And let's just save it as y2 because I already have a function, y1. Uh, save it as y2 and now calculate and ta-da! This is your exponential function uh, in the format of a times b to the power of x. Now, we can actually plot this and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna, I already have y1. Uh, I'll, explain, I'll explain to you in a second what this is. But let's just, uh, let's just graph it and see what it looks like. So this is my y1 that's uh, I've already pre-calculated. And here comes y2. This is the one we just found. So you can see there's a little bit of discrepancy. Now, I figured that this was not 100% accurate. So what I decided to do is, I've decided to launch my aircraft and I've landed a few times uh, from several different orbits, try to uh, try to see what phase angle I get, and then using these values, I kind of corrected my initial function a little bit to get the function that I posted in the description below, and it's the function y1. So I'm gonna erase y2 because it's not as accurate. y1 is quite accurate, at least um, up until I think about maybe five, six thousand kilometers, maybe even more. Um, and what this gives you is essentially the phase angle above thousand kilometers, and this is for Kerbin, of course. Um, now let's let's just for fun calculate one of them. So I think I'm currently at four four thousand kilometers above Kerbin. So let's go ahead and uh, find the needed value for phase angle at four thousand kilometers. So we click on second table set change this value of table set to 4 million meters, so 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now click on table, and at 4,000 kilometers, uh, my phase angle has to be 143.32 degrees. Okie dokie, let's do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 142 degrees, so uh, let's just go here and let's do this manually so all right 760 meters that's good now let's go here use my protractor and see what angle we get I'm gonna turn this just a little bit so it's aligned all right good so uh, this is 180 degrees and I have to be at 132 so 180 plus 132 is it's about 312 degrees so I'm just a little bit ahead of that so I kind of missed my opportunity, so I'm going to actually um, wait one more orbit and see if I can get to a more precise location. Alright, so let's calculate this again, and this is 180, and I need about 312, oh I missed it again, so it's very close to it's 308. So I'll be just a little bit behind it, which is fine. So anyway, so let's start blasting our engines, and we're going to decrease our periapsis to 0 meters. Uh, now there's actually uh, another... Um, graph that this person posted where he recalculated everything for um, I believe it's setting periapsis to 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers and so on but it's not as accurate and it's not as useful because it doesn't give you as much freedom as setting it to zero so uh, basically when you set it to zero kilometers it gives you, it gives you the most precise and also um, the most uh, varied amount of uh, phase angles for various altitudes so, which is why I decided to do it with this as well. And you don't actually waste much more fuel. Uh, you don't really spend more fuel than you would otherwise. Okay, and there we go. I think it's almost there. All right, so it says my periapsis is at one kilometer. I can actually decrease it just a little bit. So it's a little bit more accurate. And then I just wait. And if everything went well, and if I calculated everything correctly, 100 meters, perfect. 
if I calculated everything correctly, we are going to be landing right uh, behind Kerbal Space Center. So let's see if my math was correct and if we actually land there. And here comes Kerbin really, really fast. I hope I don't smack into it. It happened before when I actually accidentally forgot to decrease my time acceleration and smacked into Kerbin because I forgot to release my parachute too. Ah, things I do for science. All right, so here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, this is so fast. I need to slowly approach Kerbin and Jebediah Kerbin looks extremely happy about this whole situation. Anyway, here we go. All right, good. So now we entered atmosphere and we're basically going to be descending into uh, the atmosphere of Kerbin. And if I calculated everything correctly, Kerbal Space Center should be somewhere over there, but not yet. I'm still moving relatively fast, so I'm actually still catching up to it. But I think it's somewhere ahead of me uh, because I did have maybe three or four degree miscalculation uh, when I was when I decreased my um, periapsis. So it's just a little bit ahead of me. And I think maybe that's it right there. I see some lights right there. I think maybe that's it. All right, so we're burning through the atmosphere. I still don't see it, but I, I have a feeling that those lights in front of me uh, are this Kerbal Space Center. So let's see if I'm correct. And, and if I'm not correct, then, oh, there it is. Yeah, there we go, that's it. 90 kilometers, so relatively accurate calculations on my part. Um, I think I was maybe just a couple of degrees off in my uh, calculations, but overall this is a relatively good formula to use for basically calculating um, uh, the phase angle for, I think, altitudes up to about 5,000 kilometers, maybe even more. Um, I'm going to try it for fun with like 10,000 kilometers later and see if, if it's any good. Uh, but for up to 5,000 5, kilometers, it's definitely very accurate. All right, so I think I'm only about 40 kilometers away, 40, 46 kilometers away from it. And all we need to do now is just land. Unfortunately, we're landing at night, so that's not really good. But I can actually start releasing some of my... I don't need this anymore. And I do need to release my parachute. No, let go of me. Let go of me. All right. And there we go. So I think that's it. And that's it. So we've landed safely on Kerbin and mission success, Mr. Jebediah Kerbin. I, I have, you have about 36 kilometers to go. So might, might as well start running. Um, so that's it. That's how you basically do it. And um, the formula that I've used, I posted in the description below. So if you do have a calculator and or you can also just use uh, Google by essentially copy pasting the formula and what you'll get is this. So you can just enter it in Google and then click on search and they will give you a graph just like this that you can then use to essentially estimate a phase angle for every possible altitude. So for example, at, uh, what is this? 200, no, 2 million uh, kilometers, sorry, 2000 kilometers right here. The phase angle should be about 78 degrees. Then at four kilometers it should be about 134 degrees and so on so this this is a, another way of essentially using this formula to find your phase angle if you don't have a calculator and i think i'm going to stop this video here thank you for watching and if you found this video helpful please give it a like and subscribe if you want more math videos related to Kerbal space center or Kerbal space program or other video games that i often play um I'm posting the links for both the graph and the uh, formula in the description below. So if you do need, want to use this and if you need to find more information about it, it's all in the description below. Thank you for watching and game you later, alligators. Bye-bye.